Welcome to Electron Online. Here's the next example of how to solve a 3 fourths body. Here we have a glass and we have a glass rod that's precariously balanced on the edge of the glass right here. Notice there's no friction anywhere. The mass of the rod is 5 grams, the length of the rod is 25 centimeters, and the diameter of the glass is 7 centimeters. The question is, what is the angle at which the rod has to be placed so that it will not either slide into the glass or fall off the edge of the glass? Very precariously balanced. Let's see if we can find the answer for that. What we need to recognize is what are the forces acting on this, and since it's a three-force body, there probably are three forces that we need to be looking for. Well, the first one right here, if we call this point A, we have a force of the edge of the glass pushing back on the rod this way, so this would be force at point A. We have another force right here, force at point B, which also will be perpendicular to the rod right here, and that would be force at point B. Let's call this point B right here. And then we have, of course, the weight of the rod. Now notice that if uh, you continue the line of action of force A, which crosses the line of action of force B right there, you realize that the line of action of the weight of the rod must also pass through that point. That's the key of a three-force body problem. So here would be the center mass, and then MG would go through the rod, uh, I should say, through this point right here. All three lines of action of the three forces will pass through there. So that would be the weight of the rod. Since we have three forces acting on the rod, and everything is in equilibrium, we then know that we can draw those three forces into a triangular form. So here we have the weight of the, um, let's see here, let's try, let's start with the force at A. So here's the force at point A. Here is the force at point B. And then we have the weight of the rod MG. So there's our nice triangle. Notice that this angle theta right here must be the same as this angle theta right there which must be the same as this angle theta right there. So those angles are all the same, which means that the angle over here must be angle theta as well. So now we have a relationship between the force at B, the force at A, MG through the angle theta. We still need to find that angle theta, so how do we do that? Well, the best way to do it probably is to assume that the torques about point A must equal zero. In other words, the moment about point A must equal zero. So let's write that down. The sum of all the moments about point A must add up to zero. That eliminates the force A going through that point right there. And so now let's find out what the moments are. One of them is the moment caused by the weight of the rod, mg, and that acts through this distance right here. So let's call this distance d1. So we can say that zero is equal to mg causes a clockwise direction, that's a minus moment, so a negative moment, so negative times mg times d1. And then we have the force B pushing in the opposite direction, that's a positive moment, so that would be plus force B times this distance right here, so that, that would be, let's call this distance here, let's call that distance 2 times distance 2, and of course that adds up to 0. Now we have to relate force B to mg through the angle right here. We know that force B is the hypotenuse. This is the adjacent side to the angle, so we can say that the cosine of theta is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side. So just let's write down, divided by the hypotenuse. In this case, the adjacent side would be mg, and the hypotenuse would be fb, which means that the force at B is equal to mg divided by the cosine of theta. So there's a relationship right there. We can put that in here. D1 is simply, let's see here, D1 can be found. Let's write that down here. D1 can be found by taking the hypotenuse here, which is half the length of the rod, the hypotenuse, which is L, um, L divided by 2. That's the hypotenuse of this triangle times the cosine of the angle times the cosine of the angle theta. Again, let's see here, we have this triangle, we're looking for the adjacent side to the angle, this angle here is theta, so we have the hypotenuse, which is half the length of the rod, L over two, times the cosine of the angle. That's correct, that's D1. D2 here can be found by taking, let's see here, that's this triangle right here, so we have the diameter, this is the diameter, of the glass, so I'm going to take this triangle 
and drought right here because it's getting a little messy in here. So I'm taking this little triangle here. This is the diameter of the glass. This is D2 that we're looking for, and there's the angle theta. All right, that makes it easier to find uh, D2. D2 is the hypotenuse. That's the adjacent side. So we know that uh, the cosine of theta is equal to the ratio of the, of the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. We're looking for the hypotenuse, so the hypotenuse is equal to the adjacent side divided by the cosine of theta. In other words, the hypotenuse, which is D2, is equal to the adjacent side 7 divided by the cosine of theta. So here we have an expression for D2, we have an expression for D1, and we have an expression for F at B. Let's plug all that into our equation right here. So we have 0 is equal to minus Mg times D1. D1 would be L over 2 times the cosine of theta plus F at B. F uh, at B would be Mg divided by the cosine of theta and then multiply the times D2 which is equal to 7 divided by the cosine of theta. Now we have everything in terms of M, L, and theta and we know all those numbers except for theta so there's only one unknown left. Let's plug in the numbers that we have. So 0 is equal to minus m, that would be, uh, let's see here, we have an mg here, an mg here. The mg's cancel out, so we don't have to worry about that. We can divide both sides of the equation by mg. So we have minus L over 2, L is 25 centimeters, L over 2 would be 12.5 centimeters, times the cosine of theta, plus 7 centimeters, divided by the cosine square of theta. Moving this to the other side, dropping off the centimeters, so we have 12.5 times the cosine of theta is equal to 7 divided by the cosine square of theta, or moving all the cosines over to one side, we have the cosine cube of theta is equal to 7 divided by 12.5, which means if we take the cube root of both sides, we then say that theta is equal to the r cosine of the cube root of 7 divided by 25. So that's the cube root like that. Now we can go ahead and solve that. 7 divided by 25. Take the cube root of that. Oop, let me try that again. Oh, wait a minute. That's not 25. That's 12.5. It's half the length of the rod. So it's 12.5. That's better. So 7 divided by 12.5. Take the cube root of that. and then take the r cosine of that and I get 34.9 degrees 34.9 degrees which is the angle at which you have to place that rod so that it will not fall off the edge of the glass it will not fall into the glass so it's precariously balanced like that so again the idea is here we have a three-fourths body we identify the three forces. We know that since there's no friction, this must be perpendicular to the surface of the glass. This must be perpendicular to the edge of the rod. Then we have Mg, which is straight down. We can take the three forces, draw a triangle, recognize that this angle theta here is the same as this angle theta there, so that we have a relationship between Fb and Mg. We also are going to, we then going to solve the problem by assuming that the moments about this point must add up to zero because everything is in equilibrium which eliminates FA. We add up all the moments at point A. When we do that we find the relationship between FB, D1 and D2 in terms of theta and Mg and then the rest is just some math and that's how we do that.